Hi everyone, it's Anya here. I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks and in this video we are making a pumpkin tea cosy for our teapot. Oh, I'm so excited. Let's get started. So what do you need for this project? Obviously in this video we are going to be making the tea cosy itself. So these things here, the walnut and the khaki which we will use for the stem and the tendrils are for the next video. So let's put that aside for now. For this video we are going to be using gold. Now I have here the peg with the special DK gold on it and yes that's good to see the color but we are not using the DK thickness we are using the chunky thickness okay so this is the chunky thickness and even though we are using chunky we are going to be using a four so this chunky is prescribed as a six millimeter hook but you know, I always have to go down a size. And so maybe I would suggest if you normally uh, use the size that's on the sleeve to use a five. Okay. So yes, so the DK with a smaller hook because I want it to be nice and tight. And then of course we need, yeah, our teapot. <laughs> so I went to a charity shop, saw this teapot, thought it was a lovely colour. I was not going to let that go. Um, it looks brand new. It's not. It's never been used, I don't think. Um, you know, there was no markings on it whatsoever. So I have just measured the teapot for you. Obviously, I am going to give you some guidelines as well on how to measure your workpiece so you can make it for any teapot. But just in case you manage to get, this is quite a standard teapot, I think, in Great Britain anyway. So around the teapot like this, so around the handle, around the body and around the spout, sort of in the middle of the widest part of the teapot, we have 55 centimeters or 22 and a half inches. So if you, if you put your measuring tape around, it should be 55 centimeters, 22 and a half inches. And if you go from the table all the way to here and then all the way down to the top of the lid, it's 18 centimeters or seven inches. And then all the way down from the table to the top and to the table it's 14 inches or 36 centimeters so that should give you an idea of how big my teapot is and look you can see me in it <laughs> i uh yeah like i said i really like this teapot and i think the color goes together you know the gold with the purple i didn't want to go for orange because that was just too harsh right so let's get started on the pumpkin tea cozy So I have here my ball of Chunky Starcraft Special and as you can see it has a blue edging on the sleeve and the normal double knit has a pink edging on the sleeve. So if you're not sure that's how you work it out. Okay, so let's put that one away and let's get started. Now generally I find the you know, there'll be one that's sort of tucked in to the middle and that is, look, that's the outside. Okay, so what I tend to do is I take it out and I just roll it round a couple of times. Then I just tuck it under there and then I put my sleeve on it again. So it's disappeared. So now that's gone. So I know that the outside of my ball is under my sleeve. And then, am I going to be able to do this? Oh, I, I sort of feel around and I've got something. Is it, is it, is it? Yes, it is. So this is the beginning of my inside of the ball. And that's what you want, really, because then your ball is not going to be, um, you know, rolling about. So you make your slip knot and you insert your hook. Now, because we're using a hook that's too small, we are going to create quite a sturdy fabric. And that's what I want for my tea cozy. So we are going to chain 25 don't chain too tightly here because as i said we are using a hook that is too small and we need to make sure that we can use these chains on both sides so most of these chains will be used twice 
So I'm just going for it, but really I am not counting. So let's count together. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Two, four, five. Can you believe that? That's 25 stitches. That's what we needed. 25 change. Unbelievable. Okay, so in this project, we are going to be using half double crochets. So the height of a half double crochet for me is two chains. So I've got my 25. Now I'm going to chain my height. So this is my 25th one here. Now I'm going to chain two. This two counts as the stitch that comes out of the 25th. So we've done our first stitch. Now we are going to do <laughs> half double crochets from the next chain onwards. Right? So there we go. So this is the 25th stitch. This is a 24th stitch if you count them in your chains. So I am now going to do a whole line of half double crochets working my way back to the first chain. This is not going to be as quick as I just did those chains because you have to work out each time making sure you don't skip a stitch so into the next one and if you can tell sorry I'll show you better you yarn over, you go into the chain, but in that, do you see there's a little bit of a dark spot there? There, that's where I go in, and it picks up two legs of the stitch and one here. Okay, and that is what I do. So you yarn over, you pull up a loop, and you pull through three. So yarn over insert, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through three. Okay, so that is your half double crochet. Remember, yeah, I know what you're going to say. You think I use American terms, so don't get confused. <laughs> right, so there we go. Can I keep you talking all these 25 stitches? <laughs> I think I'll see you at the end. Okay, I've made it to the end and make sure you do that last stitch. Sometimes that chain just closes up a little bit, but if you count your V's on top of your work, two, four, six, eight, ten, two, four, six, eight, 10 to 4 and then your turning chain you should have 25 so that will tell you whether you have to get into that stitch or not now we are going to chain 2 obviously because that's the turning chain amount that we are going to use throughout the project you turn your work and that chain 2 is now your first half double crochet coming out of that last stitch okay now you are going to yarn over and twist, sort of tilt your work towards you so you can clearly see this stitch is coming out of this first V here. The next V is this one and from this one onwards we are going to use the back loop only. So you go into the V and go to the back and pick up that back loop only and do your half double crochet. So next stitch, there we go. And this will create those ridges that pumpkins are known for. And if you tilt it towards you slightly, it's a lot easier to find them. Look. So you are now going to do exactly what we have done. Work your way to the end, back loops only, half double crochets chain, two, turn, skip and start again with your half double crochets in the back loop only. You are going to do 18 
lines of this, 18 rounds. But if you do not have a teapot that is the size that I have described earlier, you are just going to have to work it out. And what we are doing is we are working our way now from the handle to the spout. Okay, so let me just show you first, I want to finish this round here. So yeah, I've done that and now here, this looks a little bit different, but you have got to find the stitch in the heart, in the turning chain to do. So you have your 25 stitches on the top, okay? So if you're not sure, count them, but here I can see this is the penultimate one, this is the ultimate stitch, okay? So let me just bring in the teapot, okay? So now we have started here. So we are now working our way all along to the spout. So what I want you to do, if you don't have the same teapot, is keep measuring. So we have from the, fl from the table, we work our way all the way to the lid. So you must make sure that your piece of fabric that you are creating comes from the table all the way to the lid and now we are going to work our way all the way until you reach the spout and for me that's 18 rounds and oh, mm, yes it makes a horrible noise I know. now how do you count so this is one row this is the second row and you will see quite clearly that you have a higher bit and a lower bit, a higher bit and a lower bit. So you can count quite easily one, two, one, two, one, two and so on. OK, so one, two, three, four, five, six until you have 18. So I will see you when you have done 18 lines. So I have done my 18 rounds. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So each time one of these ridges is two. So one, two, one, two. Okay, so that's how you count them. So I am now going to put it against my handle here and it goes all the way to the spout there. Okay, I have the end here and then I have finished on the other corner there. So now we are going to make the spout opening. So as you can see, we've got a long bit here and then just a few stitches underneath the spout. So what we are going to do, you are going to turn as usual. Let me just put this aside for the moment. There we go. So two and skip and the, that stitch there, back loop only. And you are going to do 10 stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Then you are going to chain 12. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to risk not counting it just like I did before. Let's just count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Then you are going to count 12 stitches here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And you are going to go into the 13th. And yeah, well, don't go in it, just <laughs> yarn over and go into the back loop and do your half double crochet. OK, and then another one. So you should do another three stitches because, of course, 10, 12 and 3 is 25. OK, so this is what we've got now. We are ready to turn. So chain two and turn and now we have to make up the whole round again with half double crochets 
So let's see if we can do that. Right, so those are my first three stitches. That was okay. And now we're back to doing the uh, stitches like we did them in our starting chain. So don't put them round like you would maybe normally. But you're going to pick up the chains as if you are on a starter chain. Because that will space them out nicely and that will make sure that we don't have too many. So you have to now do... 12 half double crochets into the chain that we did just now so we have an opening for our spout to go into and I am nearly there right there we go And the last one, I think. <laughs> Just count them. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, yeah, 15. Okay, and then we are back to doing our half double crochets in the back loops for the rest. No, I think that one split. For the rest of this line and then you are now going to have to do another 18 of up and down as we did before half double crochet all the way back to the handle on the other side of the teapot so right so this is where we're at at the moment so this is what is going to happen that is going to go there and then this look is going to go over the spout just like that okay now it will stretch a little bit so it will go on don't worry I have tried this out <laughs> okay so like I said I will see you now when you have done all this just like we did on this side up and down and we need to do 18 rounds again and then we will meet our piece will meet here and I will tell you how to crochet them together and how to finish off the top. So I will see you at the end of your 18th round. Now I have made it all the way around my teapot. I have met the handle here again. So I have put the cozy on my teapot just to make sure that the little thing is on the bottom of the spout and that the bigger part is at the top so that we are going to do the same here so we are going to do three stitches here then I'm going to cut off and then I'm going to continue again up there okay so I know now that where I finished I've just got to do the three stitches so let's have a look so we are going to do one chain then we get the other side of our work and we hold them together because we are going to crochet the bits together. So we are going to go and find on the other side that very first chain to go into and then here the inner loop of that stitch. There we go. So here and there that's what we pick up and another one and another one. Yeah just one leg. There we go. So that is the bottom done. You know, I always put my scissors ready and they always disappear. <laughs> so that's that one. And now, just like before, we are going to count 12 stitches. So one, uh, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So this is the first one. And then you better count them on the other side as well, just to make sure that you have got the right one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That one. So let's just put another hook in there. You then take your yarn again make a slip knot 
don't forget which one it was insert your hook let me just put this hook in there for now there okay tighten it up and we are going to get started again okay so in here we are going to pick up this one here and then the inner loop there and it's a bit awkward of course with that hook in there but I just did not want to lose my place so if all is well we should now have another 10 stitches to do and <laughs> just start crossing your fingers your legs your toes <laughs> your arms <laughs> oh dear okay and we keep going all the way to the top you could also slip stitch it but I don't mind the little ridge on there so yeah which is the next stitch so yes in the end you need to do the ones in the um, you know in the turning chains there this one here I think it is yeah And that one there and yes it has worked out <laughs> okay so of course you'll have to sew in the ends all right and what we are going to do here to turn this into a cozy is you're going to cut off quite an end okay you pull it through I mean it's just so that you have something sensible to work with and you're not working with a very, very uh, short end. Then I have my needles here. So I'm going to choose the biggest one, the one with the biggest opening. And I am going to thread it onto my needle there. And now I am going to try and find sort of those, I don't know, sort of, there's some loops that hang on the edge here, like that. And that's what I'm going to thread on to my needle. And I go round all the way. Make sure you have in, you know, you have one sort of in every what's happening here in every um, row end row end you know so you don't sort of skip too many you do quite a few here try to do them at regular intervals something like that and so in this video we've made the cozy in the next video we will decorate it because obviously the top itself although we are working you know nicely it is not going to be as pretty or it's it's going to look sort of a little bit scrunched up maybe um but you can avoid the look by putting something over it that's pretty of course so there we go so now we just pull it together it's okay it doesn't look too bad there we go see um, it might be that you can't pull it all together because it's just just too much fabric there but that's okay let's have a look let me see if I can pull it tighter okay and what you do then is you sew it together so now I'm just going to go into some of the stitches that I see sticking up a little bit like so and that brings it together even more there we go right so to finish I just gently put my needle in down and I make it disappear like that right so that's your cozy finished and to make this prettier 
obviously we're going to put the stem on with the tendrils but those I make in the next video and just to prove that it fits I'm just going to take my teapot there we go and we are going to put it over like so there we go so we've got the pumpkin all we need to do now is decorate it so thank you very much for watching and I hope you tune in for the next video where we do the decorations bye